is some impure benzoic acid. Okay, so it's got some things in. So those are the things that will be soluble, yeah, and some will be insoluble. So uh, we're going to take some of this and put it in a boiling tube okay, and put it into a water bath. So a spatula as well, that's what we're going to. I'm going to be two spatulas. Okay, two spatulas. Because the purification process is going to lose us some material. Okay, it's always going to, we're always going to lose some. So this is a bit of warm water out of the tap. Okay, I'm going to put that in there. And we need a solvent. So the solvent we're going to use, we're just going to use water. Okay, we could use best use the deionized water, but this is just a demo, so we'll put some put some water in here. So this is our solvent. Okay. I'll put that in the water bath as well, and then we light it up. Uh, and yeah, we get it nice and hot. So the water bath uh, is going to heat up both these things. Now the trick to recrystallization is I've got this much solid, and I want to dissolve it in the minimum amount of hot solvent. So I've got a pipette here, and what I'm going to do is, uh, when this gets nice and hot, I'm going to transfer from the solvent tube into the solid tube. I'm going to keep doing that until the solid just dissolves. And I'll tell you, you can tell when something dissolves, basically it goes transparent and see straight through. If it's at all cloudy, it means you've still got some solid particles. Okay. So we get this nice and hot, uh, so you guys can crack on and do that now. So, that can say uh, a little bit of the impure stuff. Yeah. Uh, and, like, we've got some sort of thing get going. Okay, so, we've got a nice hot solvent uh, at this point. I'll probably, once it's boiling, maybe the water bath is boiling, uh, that's probably a sign that you could probably turn the, turn the person off. And then, there's a transferring the hot solvent from your solvent tube to your solid and trying to get it to dissolve. Now benzoic acid has got uh, a carboxylic acid group on it which is hydrophilic which makes it want to dissolve but it's also got a, a benzene ring. I know we don't know much about benzene rings at the moment but that's stopping it from dissolving. So it's a balance between these two things. For benzoic acid it's, it's actually not that soluble in hot water. Um, you need, you're going to need quite a lot. So we started off with a big um, uh, boiling tube full of hot salt. Uh, and if you can see there, uh, I've put some in and it's starting to dissolve, it's still not gone. There's a little thing uh, which basically you need to stir this up. So if you drop the pet in there and give it a stir up, you can try and help it dissolve. Uh, but it's going, but it's not. You need to be a bit patient, but I think it's probably going to take nearly all that hot salt. I'm trying to dissolve it in the minimum, so I don't want to overdo it. So give it time to dissolve in the hot salt. Yeah. Give it a proper stir, make sure it's nice and hot. Um, still not going. So I'm running out of my lovely hot salt here, and it's not quite gone yet. It still looks like a snowstorm. Reaching the dregs here. And this is a little trick. Benzoic acid isn't terribly soluble in water, but you can tweak the solvent a bit and give it a little bit of something that is more soluble in. So, this is my little top tip is to take some ethanol. Now, ethanol's flammable, but that's okay because we turn it on to the water. And give it a little squirt of ethanol. And then give it a stir again. Okay. I'm actually sucking the stuff up into the, into the pet and then blasting it up again. Again, I'm looking for the minimum quantity. So just pour a little bit of ethanol in there, give it a squirt, and see if I can get it to go. Add a bit of chunky at the bottom there, try and break that up. Okay, break it up. So we're looking for minimum just get it to dissolve. If the water bath gets too cool, okay, 
and we won't have our solar will be hot enough. So if that is the case, you pop the top back on the ethanol uh, and reheat it through the water bath. Okay. So it depends how quickly you can get it to go. Okay, getting a bit of a feedback like there. Start to go, start the ball breaking up. So I've got one little chunk of it left. And I'm reluctant to add any more ethanol because remember I just want to just get that point where it's just dissolved. Okay, I'm just chasing a little bit of that. I'll lift it out so you can see. Can I see through it? Yeah, I think that's gone. Just gone. Okay. So, I've dissolved in the minimum quantity of hot ethanol. Now what I'm going to do, this sounds bizarre, but I'm going to cool it down. Right, so I'm going to whip this out and pour it into a nice clean beaker and see if something nice happens. So what happens is it immediately starts to go cloudy and crystals are already starting to form. Okay? So it's quite cute, you can see this stuff, the skin forms on it and it's as it gradually cool, because basically it was a saturated solution at that particular temperature. As the temperature drops you know that crystals have got to form and come out, so I'm getting the solid is being formed. Okay? So I'm going to leave that for a little while to cool down maybe 10, 20 degrees. Because what I want is a slow cooling. If I cool it quickly, I get very, very small crystals, which have a tendency to be impure. The crystallisation process isn't great. If I cool it slowly, I get nice big crystals. Big crystals is a sign of purity. Okay, so we're hoping for a nice, cool, slow cooling of this to start to produce this stuff. So I'm going to leave it for a little while. Um, while it's doing that. The lowest it will drop down to is room temperature, okay, in this room. But if I want to make it drop even lower, I can make it drop what we call a slush bag. So I've got some ice, fresh ice here. Take a little bit, not much, okay? You know when you go to McDonald's, yeah, and they give you mainly ice and a bit of Coke, okay? We want it the other way around. We want a teeny bit of ice and lots of Coke, yeah? So, This is called a slush bath. Okay. And you can see that there's just a little bit of air on the top there. So this is going to eventually going to cool this thing uh, in there. So how cold is it? Not cold enough yet. Give it another minute. So this is going to drop the temperature even lower, and therefore the stuff is going to be even less soluble. So even more crystals are going to form. If I can maximize the yield of pure stuff here by cooling it as much as possible. Okay. So let it cool, let it cool, let it cool, yeah. And then, okay, I'm going to hold the clamp to be nice, it's pretty cool. I'm going to freeze it, and that should just float in there. Right, here, 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 spin it. Okay. And I'm going to leave it there for quite a long time until that, I've got as much solid as crystallised out as possible. Okay, so we've got a nice solid mass here. It's been sitting here cooling. Um, it's really solid. It's so solid, in fact, that it doesn't splash out like a bit up. So now what I'm going to do is we'll filter this off. Now, normally we rely on gravity to do the filtering, uh, but we're going to have a little trick today. We're going to use what we call Buchner filtration or vacuum filtration. So it's a um, conical flask with. Uh, a side arm, a funnel which comes in two bits, okay, the top bit and the bottom bit. They've both got red tape on, so there are some red and some black, red with red, black with black. And that fits in there. Like that. And the reason I clamp it is because if you're doing an experiment and you've been spending ages getting to this point and you pour the stuff in here, you do that bit, okay, it's very long. Okay. So clamp it to make sure that it doesn't fall over. So, this top bit has got a little sieve arrangement on it with lots of tiny small holes through it. But it actually needs a filter paper in it as well. So the filter papers are these tiny little cute ones. And they, we don't fold these, these fit perfectly into the, um, the, 
gas up here. So there's fit, you don't need to fold this bit. Top tip is wet it. Nicely to the bottom of um, the sieve. Okay. Stick it on there. And we now need to draw air through this system. Through here. See, we're not going to put our lips on here and suck. We've got these reverse bicycle pumps. Okay. If I stick this on here, okay, and then suck like that, it draws air through the system. And if I push through slowly, and then draw through again, like that. So it's a way, it's, a, it's giving gravity a help. So, next touch left, and I want to get all of this sludge into uh, my filter. So pour it in, straight as much as I can. And and this is where losses are going to occur. The stuff's left in the beaker. And then it's dripping through a bit. And when I pull this, it speeds up the drip rate. Okay? So pull it back quickly and then push it forward slowly. Okay. Bits of back tape to stop the falling apart. So we do this for a while, trying to draw all the liquid through. And when you look down on your product, you'll see that, oh, it looks really quite shiny and lovely. Okay, whereas before it was a messy powder, uh, we're going to get this stuff to come through. So we keep doing this until the liquid stops coming through. Okay, so it can take a while. Okay, so there was some liquid, although it felt pretty solid and wouldn't tip out. Okay, it's coming through. Okay. If you had a vacuum pump, you could put it on here instead. And more efficient. Okay, but we're actually, so there's less and less liquid coming through. But the stuff has still got that liquid on it, and we want to get rid of that liquid. So what we would do is take a little bit of not hot solvent now. Okay. It's just water in my solvent. So I take some water okay, and spit that in. And I get the solvent nice and cold. Okay. I'll put it in the okay, so skin that in our stuff for a little while, get it killed. And then what we do then is wash. So any liquid that's surrounding these crystals here, we can wash that liquid through with some ice cold solvent. If the solvent was hot, it would just dissolve all the stuff that we spent ages. So there we go, a little bit of ice cold solvent, and of course, repeat the process of sucking the liquid through. So pull back quickly, push forward slowly. And what that's doing is drawing off any soluble impurities that were stuck to the crystals, yeah, and they're ending up in the bottom of the conical flask. Uh, so this is a repeat, repeat, repeat. So this is going to get the stuff. Quite dry, but not bone dry. So once we've done this, we're going to have to properly dry the thing. Uh, so the crystals will then, uh, we're going to collect them uh, and then put them somewhere nice to dry. If you remember doing, making salt preparations at DCSE, okay, you're always going to step at the end where it says wash the crystals, this done it, and then what you do is dry them. Hot dry place. Hot dry place. Yeah, uh, possibly an oven, yeah, or a top of a radiator or something like that, where they're going to dry out properly, okay, because we don't want it to be so moist. Okay, so lots and lots of this, repeat, repeat, repeat. And then uh, the final stage is collecting. So uh, I've got my uh, spatula, I need something to put them in. So if you just give me one more. Dry big, pretty small beaker. So the way to get the crystal back is just to scrape, scrape them off. Oh, beautiful! Look at that. 
straight in, and it looks like cotton wool. It doesn't look anything like the stuff that went in. So these are the, the nice pristine. Okay, they will need to go in an oven and dry. Okay, and then the filter paper, get rid of that. That's going to go in the And there's my lovely sort of candy floss type of crystals that I've collected uh, from the process. Okay. And they will be purer, or even more pure, than the original ones that went in. And if you compare, and if I look at them, these look like candy floss, and the original stuff looks a bit like uh, sort of very fine ground salt. 